<laughs> Here are three H13 tools, round and slot punches, and hot cutter. And here are the same, but this is 420 stainless steel. I've had this idea that for hot use, hardenable stainless steel might be as good, if not better, than air hardening steel. So I'm going to somewhat put that to the test today. Notice that this 420 gives off some branching sparks, though not many. Before I got the 420 stainless, I bought 300 series stuff by accident. Notice that the sparks are significantly less with this non-hardable 300 series stainless steel. That's in part due to the very low carbon content of 300 series stainless steel. You can probably see that better here. This is the 420 and you can see significant sparks with this angle grinder. And then 310 stainless and barely anything. On a hot cutter like this, it's good to put on a small secondary bevel. You don't see sparks here because I'm touching it very lightly and this disc is 400 grit. So if you've got unknown stainless, another way to test if it's potentially hardenable is if it's magnetic, like this 420 stainless steel is. This piece is 310 stainless, which is non-hardenable and non-magnetic. So I'm going to heat treat this 420 as if it's any medium carbon steel. The carbon content of this 420 is about 0.4% at a maximum, which is almost exactly the same as H13. But just to be sure, I temper it back just a little bit. The hardness that 420 can attain is somewhere between 48 and 56 HRC, whereas H13 is about 38 to 48. Hardness is important, but contrary to what a lot of people think, hardness is not the most important factor in making a good hot use tool. It has a lot to do with the alloying elements within the steel. 420 is about 12% chromium and 0.5% molybdenum, and whereas H13 is about 5% chromium and a little more than 1% molybdenum. This is a copper plate that I used to cut on. I've used it so much and copper work hardens so it's starting to crack. I'll quickly quench it since quenching anneals copper. When I get a chance I'll melt this piece down and reconstitute it into a new plate. So this is a tongue I'm working on and I want to put serrations on the one jaw end and I'll use the cutter, which is a gentle way to test that out. I first use this rack piece to evenly mark out where I want the serrations. When trying something new and you're not sure how it's going to work out, just take it slow. I need to give a really big shout out to Peter Houtmeyers for his recent very generous donation to the channel. It would be harder to take time to put together videos without this sort of generosity, so Peter, thank you. So just after a little warm up, a little easy test, it looks really good. The edge is exactly as it was in the beginning. 
I'll cut this piece of medium carbon steel now. So I'll keep going while this piece is cooling, and that'll be a bit of a better test. It's only a couple of uses, but the edge is holding up really well. So, on to the slot punch. This is three-quarter inch mild steel. On to a second heat. Being a bit harder to remove there is not a great sign. Not terrible, but not a great sign. It means the punch has maybe deformed a little bit within the hole. I can see a little bit of deforming on the very edges there. I should have been able to do this in two heats, but I'll take a third heat and punch this through. So I would rate this one as fair. Not great, but definitely not bad. But if that was harder, higher carbon stuff, I'm imagining this would blunt even more. So now to the round punch. This little piece is medium carbon steel. It doesn't start well. It seems like I'm irrevocably stuck. Definitely not good. This is the worst of the three.
I've created an abstract art piece. I call this Punch in Hole. So this is obviously not going to work. It's very clear that the punch has deformed severely within the hole. I had such high hopes for this 420 stainless, and I've had a few sets of these made, but I guess they're going to be turned into something else. You never know until you try, but now I know why I couldn't find any information on 420 stainless for use as a hot tool. As I've said before, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. So I'll just continue with H13 for these hot use tools. This small punch here is one I've used forever and dressed so many times. I'll use this now on that piece of medium carbon. No steel is completely impervious to heat and pressure. At least for the round punch, it's just way better. I'll finish out both holes in this second heat. It's just night and day from the stainless to the H13. Stainless steels are excellent at resisting corroding due to high heat or fire, but they're definitely not suitable for use in blacksmithing, at least as I see it, when you have high heat plus pressure, they don't have the shock resistance that something like H13 has. For now, for the stuff I sell, I'll stick with H13 here. We've got a lot more fooling around to do.